All right, our final question of the day from Remy in Little Rock. My wife says I make her feel broke, (laughs) but I try to remind her we are just ultra accumulators. We make a combined 275K, but we max out our 401Ks, backdoor Roth IRAs, 529 plans, 15-year mortgage, etc. How can I help her feel wealthy even in our messy middle 30s? I've told her if we stick with the plan, we will be in a great spot by 40, but she responded with, quote, we want to enjoy our lives until then. I'm torn between the now and the later. Man, I get it, Remy, and, and certainly you got to come to the same page with your spouse on your financial goals, and uh, people are built differently, and some are more thrifty, some like to spend, some want to enjoy the moment. But I do. it does make me think about um, something that happened in my personal life about 20 years ago, uh, with my father, and at the same time, I had a coworker that had given me a copy of the book called The Millionaire Next Door, and you probably read that. I have. You? There have been uh, several books written in this manner, but it's basically a book that is uh, an investigation, if you will, into who is the average millionaire in the United States. What do they do? What does it look like? And that study revealed that they didn't really make as much money as you might think. They didn't inherit it from their family. They were just ultra thrifty they they drove the beat up car they had the smallest house on the block they bought their clothes at sam's club instead of dillard's right or wherever you want to say not an upscale retailer the idea being is they they were the ultra accumulator that remy is talking about and they didn't necessarily spend a lot of money in the here and now so i read that book and 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 at that point in my life i was about 30 years old and my dad was about 60 going through colon cancer treatment. And so I was faced with this, uh, this balance, if you will, or trying to create a balance of here's what the book is telling me to do to become a millionaire and have a great retirement. And at the same time, my dad has the mortality of his life facing him at 60 years old. So I'm thinking I could scrounge together all these pennies have my million dollars, get colon cancer, and pass away and never get to use it. So that was a great struggle for me. And I think in me, John, it created a great balance. And it's not impossible to do both. No, uh, these folks make a lot of money. Yeah. And and so let's kind of walk through and take the emotion out of it and take a look at the math. If you think about $275,000, uh, of gross income, you take away $46,000 for 401ks, that leaves you $229,000. You take away another $14,000 total for Roth IRAs, if you can put that much in there for uh, the Roth IRAs, that still gets you down to about $215,000. Now, we didn't really talk about college savings or anything of that nature, but you still have a fairly good bit of money. There is math that you can go through to determine how much you need to actually be saving into these things. The, I'll remind everybody that the government does not know your financial plan. They yeah. just simply put limits on the accounts that you can contribute to. So that's not necessarily a guide for you. That's just the limit. And maxing it out is just a badge of honor that you get to talk about at the at the you know coffee shop or something <laughs> of that nature. What you've got to do is you've got to do the work of planning and get some balance in this. I understand where both of you are coming from. You're wanting to take Take advantage of earning power and the power of compound interest and all of those types of things. That makes a lot of sense. But you also want to enjoy yourself. You don't want to strain at every penny and save and save and save and never enjoy your kids or your life or, or travel or anything of that nature. And I do believe that balance is the key. Scott. Yeah. And, and I think, you know, on one hand, and you've said this before, John, that nobody has ever arrived at retirement and come into our office and said, man, I saved too much for retirement, right? right. You, you really can't save too much for retirement. Although, you can miss some things that you could enjoy along the way because you're saving for retirement. I think that's the point here is until you have a plan and you know where you're going to end up at a certain retirement date, a certain retirement age, how do you know if you're saving enough or too much or if you could maybe let go of the purse reins a little bit and spend a little more and maybe pull back on your retirement savings a little bit? It all is answered through a plan with an advisor that is working a written financial plan, not just talking to you about investments, not just talking to you about a magic number at the end of your work life, but showing you on paper, on purpose, how much retirement income you could get on a monthly basis 
after you have finished work? Because, again, we talked about it in one of the earlier questions, John. It is all about replacing your paycheck. Yeah, and I think you have to ask yourself some basic questions. When do you want to retire? Now, I know people who are fastidious savers, they want to retire as soon as possible. Let's be balanced about this decision, too. When is it practical for you to retire? Because I will tell you, early retirement sounds good to everybody, but when you start stretching those dollars out, you put a lot of stress on that portfolio to support you throughout your retirement, and sometimes it breaks in the later years. And so you've got to be careful about that but when do you want to retire what is your required and your desired income those are two very critical questions desired income is how much you want to spend on uh, just a number of things just discretionary spending but required income is the money that you need every month to pay the bills and think about it what does food cost what does clothing cost what does transportation cost what does housing cost what is insurance and taxes how much do you need every month to be able to be okay there is one uh tranche of money if you will that we call required income that needs to be taken care of with guaranteed income assets but your required income could be almost anything so you want to be reasonable about that create some balance and get a plan together and as far as the mortgage is concerned let me say this you have to ask yourself do i want to pay this off quickly i think the big objective there is just get it paid by retirement yeah uh or get it paid earlier if you can, but definitely by retirement.